Go. All right, hello. Um, my name is Reese Bunning. I'm part of the Wide Horizons Nature Program, and I'm also part of Chamber Choir and Pops Choir at the high school. Hey, my name is Levi. I'm also part of the Wide Horizons Nature Program, and I'm in the jazz band at the high school. So today we are going to be teaching you guys about something called natural selection versus artificial selection. Some genetic morphs. Yes. Present this. Here we go. Okay. So um, we have two terms here, natural selection and artificial selection. I know those are pretty big words, but um, we're going to explain what those mean. So starting off with natural selection, this uh, animal on the left here, I'm guessing most of you guys know what that is. Uh, that's a panda. Pandas are actually my favorite animal. And an interesting fact about a panda is it actually has six fingers. Now, humans have five fingers on one hand, right? Ten fingers and all. Pandas actually have six fingers on one hand. They have two thumbs. So they've got 12 fingers and all. Yeah. So they have six fingers to help them grip the bamboo that they eat. Because bamboo is really, really hard and it's tough to chew. So the pandas have six fingers and they have really big, big heads and powerful jaws so that they can eat that bamboo. And this animal on the right here uh, is called a snow leopard. And snow leopards live in like really, really cold places that are covered in snow. Um, so you can see down here, the snow leopard has like a bunch of white fur. That's because it's to help it like blend in with the snow. So when it's hunting for prey, the snow leopard is harder to see because of its white coat. And then another thing about uh, the snow leopard is it's got like this really thick fur. You guys can see how big its tail is right here. And that's because it keeps it warm in the cold, right? So we wear like coats when it is cold outside when we wanna go play in the snow. The snow leopard has this really, really thick coat of fur to help it survive in the wild. So another animal that is an example of natural selection um, is this little creature called the wood frog. And we've got two pictures of the wood frog here. On the left is a picture of the wood frog that's just living in the summer. And then on the right is a picture of the wood frog that is uh, in the winter. And you can see the difference that the wood frog in summer is just being a normal frog. But on the right, in the winter, the wood frog is frozen. There's some ice covering it, some snow. And that's because the wood frog goes into this little like sleep mode during winter. And um, what makes the wood frog unique from other animals that sleep in the winter during the winter is that the wood frog is able to freeze, like completely freeze. It shuts down everything. Its heart even stops beating. Um, but it's not dead because when summer comes back around, uh, the wood frog is back to its normal self and it just hops around like a normal frog. Yeah, so the next animal that we want to tell you guys about is called the mimic octopus. And the mimic octopus is a really, really interesting animal. And you'll see that in a second when we show you this video. Got a bit of a clip. Yeah. Unknown until it was spotted, first by fishermen off the coast of Indonesia in the 1990s. It looked like an octopus, but it could morph its shape in an instant to appear as seemingly any animal around it. At first, no one had any idea what it was. It really is the first to put a fish called a banded sole. In other cases, if it's getting attacked, it puts six arms down a hole and raises the other two arms to look like a poisonous sea snake that has bands along its body. If that's not enough, it'll swim along looking like a poisonous lionfish with these banded arms looking like the banded spines that come off these very deadly fish. Yeah, so that's the mimic octopus. And I just think that's so interesting that this octopus can make itself look like other animals. Um, so it can look like the lionfish that you see here that's poisonous. It can look like all these different animals that live close to where the mimic octopus lives. 
Uh, and that's something that the mimic octopus learned through natural selection. Because the mimic octopus could look like these other animals swimming around, it was better to survive because something that might want to eat the octopus would be uh, not as happy to eat something that they thought was poisonous, like the lionfish or the sea snake. So we have a visual of uh, how animals get this type of ability that they are born with that helps them survive in the wild. So the very far left picture is we have a hawk and some two colors of mice. So we got tan colors and some gray mice. And as you can see on the first picture, there's a lot more tan mice than there are gray mice. But if we go into the middle, the second picture, well, those tan mice are gone. That's because the hawk eats the tan mice. And so the hawk is able to easily see the tan mice more than the gray ones. So then in the third picture, you can see that when the mice have babies, because there are more gray mice left, there's going to be more gray mice that are um, babies than there are going to be tan mice. And that's kind of an example of how um, animals are born with natural selection or this ability to help them survive in the wild. So we talked about natural selection. The next thing we want to tell you guys about is artificial selection. Now artificial selection is kind of the opposite of natural selection. So natural selection is only in the wild, but artificial selection is in captivity or with humans. So this picture on the left right here is a chihuahua. A really really small dog and something interesting about the chihuahua or a lot of types of dog is so dogs were originally like the big wolves that's what they came from but I don't know about you Reese I don't think I would want a wolf as a pet I think that's a bit too big for me uh, kind of scary uh, yeah as but, much as I love wolves I, uh, I don't know if I could have one yeah, yeah. I might want something smaller like this chihuahua here. Um, or a pug. Yeah, yeah. Or if you want to keep a big dog, you could go German Shepherd, Husky, Golden Retriever. There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. So on the right here, we have a bunch of snakes um, in this big bucket here. So all these snakes look really different, right? So you've got like an orange one here with black stripes. You've got a black one here with yellow stripes. There's like this white one with like brown spots and they all look really different and unique. Uh, but they're actually all the same kind of snake. They're all ball pythons, which is crazy because they all look different, right? But you could go into a pet store and see snakes that are all sorts of different colors, but they might all be the same kind of snake because of artificial selection we can breed snakes that look different than they're supposed to look in the wild. So we got to see the picture uh, uh, with a bunch of different snakes. And then we have these two snakes uh, right here. They both look different, but in truth, both of them are the same snake. They're called ball pythons. And on the left, the, the brown and the green kind of, colors that ball python is a ball python you would find in the wild you know kind of a forest area you know to hide behind the leaves the trees and everything but on the right you know the white and the black stripe um, ball python that one you won't find in the wild because it's not going to easily hide from predators that want to eat it but the reason is why that ball python on the right looks white and black than the one on the left is because maybe I don't want a ball python that's green and brown with black stripes, but I want a ball python that's white with black stripes on it. And that's why there are different um, ball pythons that look different from when they are in the wild is because we get to decide, oh, this looks even cooler than the one I would find in the wild. I want this one. So uh, artificial selection isn't only in snakes and dogs. You can find artificial selection all over. So this picture right here is a liger. Uh, humans wanted to try to cross 
a lion and a tiger and make something really cool like a big cat with the big hairy mane of the lion right and like the black stripes of the tiger all around but what we got is this like kind of dull like lazy big cat um called the liger and it wasn't really exactly what we were looking for but that's because we can't predict what uh the animal is going to look like we don't know how uh how it's going to look and we it's like completely random so other other things that you can see natural selection in is like well we already talked about snakes and lizards like in the pet stores and then dogs and cats there's also a lot of artificial selection that goes into farming so the crops that uh farmers raise like corn and beans and wheat and potatoes all sorts of things they use artificial selection to make the biggest and the most tasty food that they can um and there's all sorts of ways that we can use artificial selection to benefit humans so um we have these three pictures here on the bottom right we have a picture of a leopard gecko and that leopard gecko is in the wild, right? You would find in the wild, kind of a desert area. It's got black spots to help it cover when it's in the shade, you know, hiding. The yellow, kind of bright colors when it's in the sand. But on the left, well, that's also a leopard gecko. And on the top right, that too is also a leopard gecko. But they look completely different because we get to decide what we want a leopard gecko to look like. And so we have a bunch of different pictures of different styles, patterns, colors of leopard geckos. Yeah. So. We've got orange leopard geckos and leopard geckos with different colored spots and completely white ones. We've got yellow ones with black spots. All these, Go we've got a purple one over here. All There's these even colors. Yeah, there's even some with like spots just on the head and then stripes all around or on its tail. Different different styles. Yeah. So, um, we had an activity for you guys, um, but since we're not going to be able to go into the schools, we're just going to do it for you here and then invite you to do it at your houses if you want to do it on a piece of paper and maybe show your family or show your siblings or your teacher if you want to. Um, but this is our activity. So our first, um, our first illustration is we've got this blank whiteboard, right? And we're gonna draw some stuff on it, aren't we, Reese? And you're gonna, help oh, yeah. me decide, you're gonna help me decide what to put on it. All right, cool. let's do it. Do we want something like a cold environment or a warm environment? Let's go warm environment. Okay, we'll do a warm environment here. I'll switch the screen so that you guys can see this better. Seeing how it's spring and all, or it's going uh, to be spring. Uh, I just realized something. I stopped the screen sharing, Reese. Ah. Uh. Um, so I don't know if I can share. Oh, wait. Hmm. Some technical difficulties. There we go. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, but I think I got it working. Um, so Reese, do we want a warm or a cold environment? I'll put you on the oh, warm. We'll do a warm environment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a few warm environments to choose from. What are some examples? Uh, there's some, uh, desert. Um, there's a forest. Forest. Uh, let's see. A beach. A beach. Yeah, that's a good one. You got one, Levi? Uh, how about like the, the outback in Australia? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, All so right. There's four to choose from. We've got the desert, the beach, the forest, and the outback. Which one do you want, Reese? 
Let's go with the forest. Forest. Okay. So, what's something that you know about forests? Well, a forest is very green. Okay, we've got a lot of green. Very green. So, are we going to do like a um, forest or just like a, a drier forest? <laughs> rainforest. Rainforest. Okay, we'll do a rainforest. So, rainforests have a lot of trees, right? Oh, yeah. Big big trees some big trees very big trees i hope you guys can see this we've got some big trees here in the rainforest mm -hmm. and we've got the the uh the layer of leaves here what's that called that's called the canopy right yeah the canopy layer up here of leaves Okay, so we've got some green leaves up here, so the sunlight's not as easy to get down. Mm -hmm. We've got some green plants down here, right? Lots of grass and leaves and little yeah on the bottom. Uh, got some branches sticking out from the trees. Yeah, maybe we've got some branches in the trees, like this. Yeah. And we've got some branches over here. As you guys can tell, I'm not an artist. <laughs> Bear with me for a minute. <laughs> Both of us aren't, so. Yeah, so we've got our trees here uh, with some branches. Now, what are some animals that live in the rainforest, Reese? Well, there is a snake that lives in a rainforest. Yeah, uh, You got some panthers. Yeah. Definitely some birds. Some birds, yeah. And a chameleon. A chameleon? Yeah. So what animal do you want to use, Reese? Hmm. Let's go with a chameleon. A chameleon. Okay. Interesting choice. So what is something about a chameleon? Chameleons, do they live like in on the ground or like in the sky? No, they live on they live in the trees up on the branches. Yeah, okay. Um so we'll do a thinner branch for this chameleon because they're not that big, right? But we'll no. for you guys to see. Maybe it's not to scale. So how do chameleons grip onto the branches? Well they got uh, these little like I'm trying to think of the word here. Like claws, in a way, to like really hold on. Got bigger fingers. They have like three fingers. Yeah. So you've got a couple. I'm trying to find the word. Just latch on. Okay, and then they've got their legs. I have no idea how this is gonna look. <laughs> um. Probably better than how I would draw it. How about a chameleon's head? Does it have like, it has like the big kind of dome thing? And it's yeah, got it has, uh, big eyes, right? Yeah, it's got big, huge eyes. Able to look in opposite directions or wherever. Yeah, so what does that help with, Reese? Uh, it helps them see, you know, different things. Like, helps it hunt its food or see if a predator is coming. Yeah. So does Very it, hard to sneak up on a chameleon. Does a chameleon have slits in his eyes or does it have round pupils? Uh, it's got round. Yeah, round pupils. Um, because it's not poisonous. Nope. Usually the slit means that it's a poisonous animal. So what about a chameleon's tail? Do they have really long tails? They do. Yeah, what does that help with? Uh, it helps them, like, hold on to branches. Or um, there's one other that I'm trying to think of. Isn't there? Well, that's what I know. It helps them hold on, hold on to branches. Yeah. And then uh, there's a couple more interesting things about chameleons. I know that they have some special tongues, right? Mm hmm. What's something special about a chameleon's tongue? Uh, something special about a chameleon's tongue is it's kind of long. Kind of long. So what what do chameleons eat? Bugs. 
Bugs. Okay, so like flies. Tons and videos. yeah, flies. Okay, so we'll have a fly over here, maybe. Is that too far for the chameleon to reach? Nope. How about this one? Is that too far? Probably. Maybe. Yeah. So, if the chameleon wants this fly, it's gotta have a really, really long time to get it. Mm hmm. Give this chameleon a super long tongue to get that fly. This a rope. Tongues that are really, really long so they can shoot them out and catch the bugs far away from them. Uh, and then, what about a chameleon's color? What color is a chameleon? Uh, usually it's green, but it can change colors. Really? With its surroundings. Yeah. So it could be what color? really whatever color. Hmm. But its natural color, I believe, is green. Okay, usually chameleons are green, right? Yeah. And then maybe they can turn different shades of, like, brown. Some colors that you would Blue. find. Blue. Right? But yeah. Not not like completely rainbow. They can't do that, right? No. So we've got our green chameleon with a super long tongue. Mm -hmm. All those things that we drew on the chameleon are going to help it survive in the rainforest, right? Oh, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to pause this video while I erase the whiteboard. And we're back with a clean whiteboard. Uh, so next... Well, actually, you see, I'm going to pause it again because I'm going to draw a gecko on here so that we can put some stuff on it. And we got our gecko. Hey, that was like magic, dude. I know. I am actually a magician. What? <laughs> so what we're going to do with this gecko, Reese, you are going to tell me what to put on it. You can tell me anything to put on it, and I will put it on it. Um, you can choose Imagination. What yeah, use your imagination. And I want the kids who are watching this, if you guys want to, you can get a piece of paper and draw your own gecko with whatever you want on it and show it to your family, show it to your teacher, uh, show it to your friends, but maybe not while we're um, in quarantine. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be a gecko. We can say that. It could be a dog, a cat. Just don't do it to a live animal. Yes. <laughs> Just draw it, please. What do you want on this gecko? Uh, let's add some stripes here. I don't want... Stripes. What type of colors do we got? Okay. Uh, we've got red. We've got darker red. We've got green. And we've got lighter green. And that's all we have. <laughs> let's, go, let's go with that uh, dark green stripes just on the body. You want, like... Zebra stripes, tiger stripes, just like... Let's, let's go s tiger stripes. Tiger stripes, okay, I like it. So we'll do some tiger stripes on this gecko. Yeah. Make it look styling. Yeah. And these are not great stripes, but you get the picture, you know? Oh, yeah. We'll do tiger stripes on his body. Yeah. Put something else on his tail. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we can add some red squares. Red squares. Where do you want the red squares? Uh, let's put it on the tail. On the tail. Okay. We'll do some red squares on the tail. How many red squares do you want, Reese? Let's go four. Four red squares. Should they be the same size or should they be different sizes? They could be different sizes. Okay, we'll do a little tiny one right here. All right. And then we'll do a big one. Very tiny one. Okay, we've got four red squares on the tail there. Mm-hmm. You know what? Even though we're adding, like, patterns and colors on it, let's go – let's add some clothing. I want a skirt. A skirt? We want a skirt on the gecko? Should we yeah. do your red skirt? Yeah, let's do a red skirt. Like a ballerina skirt? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. A little how. tutu. Yeah, let's give it a tutu. Is that what it looks and, like? Yeah. Or, yeah. The leg here, because you can't see the leg underneath the tutu. No. It's not transparent. <laughs> Is that good? 
And then we always get asked this whenever we go to the schools. Let's add some dragon wings on that. Dragon wings. Okay. I like to draw some dragon wings. We get asked that like every time when we go to schools. Yeah. Dragon wings are pretty fun, man. Oh, yeah. No, we do enjoy putting it on there on the gecko. <laughs> have you ever seen a gecko with wings, Reese? I have not. I haven't either. I would be very surprised if I saw one. Okay, um, we'll put some green for the this part. Maybe we can, for the next part, let's add some shades on there. Maybe like a Hmm. Like sunglasses shades? Yeah, like sunglasses. Okay. How are those wings? They look awesome, dude. Okay, we'll put some sunglasses on this gecko. Um, I don't know if I know how to draw sunglasses. <laughs> okay. We will see. <laughs> Who cares? Our yeah. sunglasses. Looks more like an eye patch, but. <laughs> yeah, but it works. What if our gecko breathes fire? Like, breathe fire? Yeah, like a dragon. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Okay, we'll do that. Can't have a gecko have dragon wings without breathing fire. Yeah, and you can't have a ballerina gecko with a tutu without putting a bow on it. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> okay, we got some fire. We'll put a bow right here. Looks okay. cool and cute at the same time. Yeah. What's next? Anything else? Uh, this yeah. That that's a bit blank there. Let's add. Let's add a mix of colors, uh, like polka dot colors. Okay, polka dot colors. Put some lighter green polka dots. Yeah. Some blue. Yeah. Some red. How about some maroon? And then we can do some dark green. Yeah. And just for fun, we'll do a couple black ones. So why not? Oh, I think that looks great. <laughs> oh, yeah. <It> looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put one more thing on there? Uh, we can, yeah. What should we do? Hmm. I'm going to let you decide, seeing how you've been letting me. Sure. Should we give it a second tail? Oh, yeah. Let's let's give it a second tail. That's crazy. Okay, we'll put a second tail on this gecko. Should we put anything on the tail? We got it. Yeah, we do. Okay. Let's put some... Swirls on the tail. Ah. Uh, okay, how's that look? Oh, uh, it looks awesome. Like something you would not find in the wild. Yeah, that is something that you would never see, ever. <laughs> not in the wild. So, this is our leopard gecko. Um, what's his name? <laughs> Uh, Ed. Ed. Okay, this is Ed from Gecko. Um, now I think it would be really fun if you guys wanted to do some drawings like this too. See if you can come up with something that's prettier than ours, or that's cooler than ours. Crazy, yeah. I mean, crazy. It's a challenge. Yeah. So if you guys, because we made Ed look cute and cool at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we did. 
Okay. Um, so the idea is this isn't something that would help Ed survive in the wild, right? Ed wouldn't survive better if it had green stripes and black squ- or red squares, right? That wouldn't help him in the wild, would it, Reese? No, it wouldn't. But um, on a chameleon, a really long tongue might help it survive in the wild so it can catch bugs that are far away. And that's because of natural selection. This is artificial selection, something that would not benefit the animal, but it's something that we like, that we think looks cool. (coughs) So artificial selection is something that humans do to help us or to um, make something that we like. And natural selection is something that happens to help an animal survive in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, Be better off. Uh, and that's our presentation for you. We have an animal with us, actually. So, Reese, I will make your screen big, and you can show them what we have. Yeah. She will... Hey. Eh. So, I got her here. So, this... We've been talking a lot about leopard geckos. This is Echo. Yeah. And as you can see, she's kind of shedding some skin here getting very close wow. but we saw on with some leopard geckos different types of colors and patterns but you know but ones you would find in the wild would have black spots echo has none no black spots she's all you know like some uh big giant spots here some stripes brown spots um she is an example of artificial so she's something that she was born with all these little patterns and colors here. Yeah. So what's an interesting fact about Echo? Since we don't have any questions, what's something that we usually get asked? Um, something really neat about Echo is her tail. Um her tail can come off of her body um and the reason how a leopard gecko would lose their tail is if they feel threatened by a predator they'll just completely uh take it off and the predator will be confused by it and that allows echo to run away and echo has not lost her tail so this is her full length of a tail Because if a leopard gecko would ever lost their tail, it'll grow back, but not to the same size as it originally was. Something we want to keep Echo's tail. Yeah, something else interesting about leopard gecko's tails is you'll see different sizes of tails sometimes. Echo's got a pretty fat tail in the back there because she eats a lot of food. Um, Mm -hmm. The geckos will actually store their food in their tails. So the fatter the tail, the more food they've eaten. Sometimes you'll see a gecko with a really, really skinny tail, and that means that it's pretty hungry. It hasn't eaten in a while. Uh, so that's an interesting fact. You got anything else? Uh, her tongue. Her tongue's actually pretty interesting. Um, when Echo ever licks something, it helps her determine if that object is alive or not. It's called a Jacobson gland in the leopard geckos. That she licks something. I don't know if I can get her to... There she goes. Yeah. But anytime she licks something, that helps her determine if it's alive or not. So that's helped her whenever we give her crickets. Uh, she determines, oh, is this cricket worth eating or not? Yeah, because she does eat crickets, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Eat anything She's else? a very picker, picky eater. Yeah, we that's feed, all she eats. Yeah, we try to feed her mealworms, uh, and she will not eat them. She only likes crickets. But yeah, geckos eat small insects, sometimes cockroaches. Mm. Uh, crickets. Mm. but yeah this was our presentation um i we know it's been tough with this self-quarantine and all but we are definitely happy to uh teach you guys a little bit about leopard geckos yeah thank you guys for listening and remember stay healthy wash your hands and stay six feet apart oh yeah and if you t- touch an animal Always wash your hands. Any animal, just wash your hands. That's a good 
key thing to always know. So yeah. Bye. Bye.